In this video we will practice writing and evaluating geometric sequences. This is AP Precalculus Topic 2.1. If you appreciate this content, please help me out by hitting the like button. Remember that geometric sequences have a common ratio between successive terms. In this case, there's a common ratio of r equals 2 because you can get from one term to the next by multiplying by 2. A geometric sequence can be modeled by this formula, where gn is the nth term of the sequence, and gk is another term, term k. r is the common ratio that I just mentioned above, and n minus k is this index minus this index. Example 1. Find an equation for the geometric sequence with g3 equals negative 3 and r equals 10. We can start off by writing gn equals. gk is some term that we know. Let's use g3. r is the common ratio, so that goes right here. And it is to the n minus k power. That's this index minus this index. In other words, n minus 3. But we know that g3 is negative 3, so let's just fill that in. So we get gn is equal to negative 3 times 10 to the n minus 3 power. And that's it. This expression will give us any term of the geometric sequence. In example 2, we will again find an expression for gn, but then we will use that expression to find g5. Let's start off with gn equals gk. So that's going to be a value that we've been given. I'm going to go ahead and put the 24 here this time. Just remember that k is 2. And then we have the common ratio, which is 1 half. And we raise this to the n minus k power. So in this case, that'll be n minus 2. This is one expression for gn. Now let's use it to find g5. Well, g5 will equal 24 times 1 half to the 5 minus 2 power. That's the third power. 1 to the third power is 1. 2 to the third power is 8. So 1 half to the third power will be 1 eighth. 24 times 1 eighth is the same as 24 divided by 8. So g5 is 3. That's it for example 2. In example 3, we are not given the common ratio r. Instead, we are given two terms of the sequence. We will use these two terms to find r. Also, at the end, we will find g11. To find r, let's substitute g6 for gn and g3 for gk. I always like to put the term with the larger index in the front. So, so far we have g6 is equal to g3 times r to the n minus k power. That will be 6 minus 3, which is the third power. g6 is 128. So we have 128 is equal to g3 is negative 2, so negative 2 r to the third power. Dividing both sides by negative 2 gives us negative 64 equals r cubed. Taking the cube root of both sides gives us r equals negative 4. Now we can write the expression for gn. gn will equal gk. For gk, just pick one of these, and I always pick the smaller one. So I'm going to put uh, the negative 2, and I will remember that k is 3. And then times r, which we just found is negative 4, to the n minus k power. So that's n minus 3 power. And that's it. This is the expression for gn. Now let's use this expression to find g11 which will equal negative 2 times negative 4 to the 11 minus 3 power. In other words, to the 8th power. 
negative 4 to the 8th power turns out to be positive 65,536. So G11 is negative 131,072. To be honest, I used a calculator on that last problem, and I'm going to do it again. This is another one where we are not given the common ratio R, but instead we are given two terms of the geometric sequence. Let's plug in G7 for Gn and G2 for Gk. Always put the larger index in the front. So I will have G7 is equal to G2 times common ratio R to the n minus k power, that's 7 minus 2, which is the fifth power. But G7 is 1.5. So we have 1.5 is equal to 48 R to the fifth power. Next, we need to divide both sides by 48. For a moment, we have 1.5 over 48 equals r to the fifth power. I'm anxious to get rid of this decimal, and I know that if I multiply 1 and a half times 2, I'll get 3. So I'm going to multiply the numerator and the denominator by 2. I'm going to double them both. So that will give me 3 over 96 is equal to r to the fifth power. But now I notice that uh, 96 is divisible by 3. This reduces to 1 over 32 equals r to the fifth power. I just need to take the fifth root of both sides of the equation. The fifth root of 1 is 1, and the fifth root of 32 is 2. I have memorized that 2 to the fifth power is 32, so I do know that in my head. I only mention it because anything I have memorized, you should probably go ahead and memorize as well. Memorize that uh, 2 to the fifth power is 32. Anyways, now that we have R, we can begin to write our expression for Gn, which will be Gk, and uh, we can just pick one of these two. I always pick the smaller one. Well, I, I pick the, the lower index one, which is the 48. And then times r, so times 1 half, to the n minus k power. And here the k is 2, so n minus 2 power. So this is one expression for gn. If we had picked the G7 instead, it would have looked like this. Gn is equal to 1.5 times 1 half to the n minus 7 power. So either one of these is valid. Now it's time to find G11. And uh, we can use either one of these to do that. I'm actually going to use the second equation because the 1.5, that's 3 over 2, that's smaller than this 48, and when I do the 11 minus 7, that's going to give me a smaller exponent, so I think this will be easier. So G11 will equal 1.5, and I will go ahead and write 3 over 2, times 1 half to the 11 minus 7 power, so that's the fourth power. So one half to the fourth power is one sixteenth. One to the fourth power is one, and two to the fourth power is sixteen. So now we have g eleven is equal to three halves times one over sixteen. Uh, this doesn't reduce, so I'm just going to multiply straight across. So g eleven will equal 3 over 32. And that's it. Hey guys, don't forget to like and subscribe, but also if you found this video helpful, there's a lot more where that came from. You can click the upper link, which will take you to the whole unit playlist, or you can click the lower link, which will take you to the next video in the playlist. See you there.